2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. I have been looking forward to asking this gentleman some very important questions this morning. As always, we, we know him, you love him. It's Professor John Fischetti talking always about education. But, John, I remember when we were in school and we did that horrible, that swear word, algebra. And, you know, hey, let's say that X equals two and we'll just expand from there. And I remember the conversations that would go on and on and be like, why are we learning this stuff? Because unless I want to come back and teach it to some other poor kids in 10 years time, where am I going to use it again? But apparently that's the wrong way of thinking. Yeah, actually, good, good morning, Mark. It's good to see you. Mm-hmm. The algebraic concepts that you're speaking of are actually the major ingredient in the innovation age. I call this the innovation age, which is where we work together to solve problems or create knowledge. That's where most of the new work for the next 50 years will be. It's not in uh, anything that will be if it hasn't already been automated. You know, at any of the supermarkets around town, they're replacing live checkout with machine automated, and you can use that example in almost every business. Mm -hmm. So the kinds of jobs that will be out there require an intellectual capacity, which actually requires a very high level of reasoning and thinking and mathematics. So anybody who's thinking that they've used their GPS recently, the triangulations of the algorithms that are based on their GPS, any games, any of the tools that we really use are using algebraic concepts at a fairly high level. So if you're interested in having a good job for the future, you get very keen at the upper levels of at least algebra and beyond into more abstract mathematics. So they're kind of like the building blocks, the first stepping stones to all of those things that you've mentioned, but where a lot of the the work and and, and jobs are going to be, and many are already here now. It's the way of thinking algebraically that's actually guiding the internet. Other mathematical concepts as well, you know, the whole digital system is based on a binary system, base two. And you may have gone through in year four or five understanding base 10, which is the customary way in which we do business in the Western world. But we're really in a base two model of on and off, (laughs) zeros and ones. And the entire internet is based on switching things on and off and cramming those bits through as fast as we can. So even the earlier mathematical concepts are vital to understand what's the root of our whole innovation age society. So I guess back to it at an education level, um, there are those that will fortunately uh, go through and just love this stuff Mm -hmm. and soak it up. So they're okay. For everybody else, how do we get what you've just said in, into practice, how do we make it so that people uh, are really uh, switched on to these concepts? That's yeah, a great word to use, is switched on. So I think for most of us, we did the odd-numbered exercises at the end of a section. And those added up to quizzes and tests and exams, and some learned it intuitively, and some were turned off. To turn people on, what schools are doing is creating what the terminology is maker spaces. Those are places where using the concepts in mathematics and science and in literacy areas, students coming together are building designing, making, creating, presenting, and, and uh, then sharing and presenting to one another the work that they've done. So taking those concepts out of the textbook but making them happen. You'll notice a lot more emphasis on coding and coding not just for the specifics of the language of the program but actually to get stuff to happen, like make that robot, uh, the, the robot go pick up your coffee cup and bring it back. Well, that's a literal task. It could be automated, but the skill set to do that requires a lot of thinking algebraically, geometrically, problem-solving, collaboration. And then with that skill, it scales up to things which are going to be doing great jobs in the future. So maker spaces you may have heard of popping up in primary and secondary schools all around. And generally speaking, um, are, are schools really making that switch or is it sort of a bit of a slow process or are we generally getting it right and making that 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 mindset change the there are things called the flip classroom where i would say that's happening sporadically meaning a teacher has done the the work we used to do in class you do that prior and then we come and do stuff together so the reason we come to school is work together to do stuff not just listen to teachers talk I would say that's more hit or miss. There are certain schools that have taken on there more broadly, but my challenge to school leaders around is not to flip the classroom, but to flip the school. That since we can do so much of that boring stuff online, we can do that prior. When we get to school, it ought to be an innovation space and where we get to work together to create knowledge and solve problems that help improve things. Schools that are doing that are actually getting an uptick in student engagement, student marks, scores on tests going up, and overall parent satisfaction because there's a whole new purpose for schools. 
We seem to be holding on to the schools we went to rather than evolving the schools that we need. And so I see that's a really good question. I think I don't think it's happening as widespread as we might and have anticipated. Which is an entire broader discussion yeah. as well. But I, I see, see another word you missed out there, fun. That is actually going to make it fun. So if you're yeah. enjoying what you're doing, you're going to be better at it. Well, the notion of switched on involves an intellectual fun. It's not a lower academic. It actually is your, your brain is on fire and you want to be engaged. That's what we're looking for is to get every child inspired about their own learning. And that's the magic of mathematics if done in the applied way. There's engineering concepts, obviously overlaps with science and the integration of the arts because we're going to do something like that that make a web page or we're going to have it move and build something with it or we're going to put it online and have it do great things for us. So a lot of the folks have moved into the notion of STEAM, which is the science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So it's adding the A into STEM. And math is actually the fundamental component of that. And that's what we want. We want all of that to happen. We want the education to be fun. And who, who, who knows? X equals two. It, it finally, we've finally found a reason for it. <laughs> I knew there was a reason why I learned that. John, thanks for coming in. We'll yeah, talk to you next more. time around at 2NURFM 103.7.